Welcome to another strange, obscure story. Have you experienced a strange event that you couldn't explain? A door that shut on its own? Mysterious footsteps through the house? A strange presence in the darkness of your bedroom? Today we'll be discussing the mysterious and often controversial topic of poltergeists. Poltergeist is German for noise ghost. Those who believe in the supernatural attribute powers to poltergeists to cause physical effects like moving or throwing objects, producing strange sounds, and even physically attacking people. Often though, these are more accurately the result of recurrent spontaneous psychokinesis, according to parapsychologist Lloyd Auerbach who argues that poltergeists are manifestations of psychokinetic energy, a form of psychic power that allows one's mind to move material items. The Society for Psychical Research further explains that while the activity could be attributed to ghosts or paranormal entities, bursts of psychokinetic energy often come from someone still alive. In these cases, the person may unconsciously create bursts of energy to relieve stress or emotional pain, such as when a widower has recently lost their spouse. This person will most likely be unaware that they are causing the activity. However, in some cases, the activity may be caused by a ghost or spirit that can use telekinetic energy to affect matter. In these cases, the psychokinetic manifestations may be subtler and less distinct than those of a living person. It's important to note that the physics behind poltergeist phenomena is unknown and remains in the realm of theory. Some skeptics do not believe in psychokinetic energy and suggest alternative explanations like fraud, psychological factors, or misperception as there isn't any concrete scientific evidence to prove their existence. Despite this, a few cases of alleged poltergeist activity have garnered significant attention and remain unexplained. The Greyfriars Cemetery in the center of Edinburgh, Scotland, is a well-documented site of paranormal activity. This cemetery is hundreds of years old and is the final resting place of many historical figures it also inspired J.K. Rowling as the final resting place for Voldemort. George Mackenzie, a lawyer known as Bloody George for his role in torturing and imprisoning Protestant rebels in the 1600s, is a malevolent poltergeist said to haunt the Black Mausoleum. There have been numerous reports of strange happenings at the mausoleum, including mysterious fires, lights, and animals being found dead nearby since a homeless man broke in to find shelter in 1999, supposedly freeing the wicked spirit. Many people claim to have been physically attacked by an unseen force at the mausoleum and have sustained scratches, bruises, and burns on their bodies. Despite multiple investigations, the cause of these incidents remains a mystery. This is not the only haunted spot within the cemetery. Many visitors report cold spots, white figures behind graves, and knocking noises from below the ground. The cemetery has a long history of grave robberies, from professional resurrection men like Burke and Hare, who operated in the 1800s selling bodies to the university anatomy department, to teenagers who were arrested in 2003 for cutting the head off a corpse and using it as a glove puppet. In the 1960s, slightly north in the small town of Dollar, talk of the Sorky poltergeist starts when a girl named Virginia Campbell moved across from Ireland to the village of Sorky, in Clackmannanshire, Scotland with her mother. Strange noises and movement of household items were soon reported in the home. As the weeks passed, the activity increased in intensity, but only occurring while Virginia was physically in the home. The family contacted their local GP and a vicar for help. Still, the activity followed Virginia to school, where her desk lid moved independently, and objects flew through the air. Eventually, the family contacted the Society for Psychical Research, who, following investigation, concluded that Virginia was the cause of the activity, likely due to unconscious psychokinesis triggered by stress and emotional turmoil. The activity stopped when Virginia received psychological help. We will skip over the 1970s case of the Enfield poltergeist, made world famous by the film from 2016, The Conjuring 2, since much has already been said about it, and whether it was real or a hoax. Good choices here. Moving across the North Sea to Germany, we'll find another unsolved case referred to as the Rosenheim poltergeist. 
In this case, a lawyer's office was said to be haunted by a poltergeist that caused objects to move, made strange noises, and even interfered with the electrical systems in the building. The case was investigated by a team of scientists who could not find a natural explanation for the reported phenomena. They eventually pinpointed the activity to his employee Anne-Marie, who had undergone a series of traumas. There is a pattern in these cases of distraught teenagers affecting the world around them. Another mysterious and unsolved case of alleged poltergeist activity is the Dovelston poltergeist, discussed in the book The Vertical Plane by Ken Webster. In this case, from the early 1980s, a couple claimed a poltergeist haunted their home. Strange, six-toed footprints would appear on the walls and floor, furniture would be piled up, and they would find objects stacked. They would hear strange noises and experience sudden, unexplained temperature changes. But most bizarre was that some form of poltergeist began communicating with the residents through a relatively simple monochrome computer, using extraordinarily detailed and accurate 15th century English. This may immediately appear to be a hoax. Despite this, the residents were usually home and outside the room where the alleged activity occurred. If it were a hoaxer, they would have needed to be extremely agile, highly educated, and determined to continue the hoax for a year without being caught, sometimes typing the information within minutes of their typed queries. The case received media attention from local papers and the BBC. Paranormal researchers investigated it, but no conclusive explanation was ever found. Paranormal activity isn't limited to Europe. The Lewis County Historical Museum in Chehalis, Washington, is rumored to be home to several poltergeists, with tour groups experiencing inexplicable events like flying books and pencils appearing out of nowhere before dropping to the floor at their feet. During an investigation, a pen was thrown from the sign-in desk with such force that it crashed into a glass case, sounding like gunfire. Specific poltergeist activity is still reported relatively often, with one example occurring in Glasgow in 2016. The family endured two days of strange and inexplicable happenings, describing instances where the lights were going off, with the lampshades appearing upside down when power returned and clothes flying across the room. Both these instances were witnessed by police officers, resulting in an extensive investigation and senior discussions within Police Scotland regarding how to respond. The poltergeist moved their activities outside when a pet chihuahua appeared on top of a seven-foot garden hedge. This was the final straw for the family, who, at this point, moved out of the house and had no further problems. In terms of investigations, one technique often used in instances of alleged poltergeist activity is electronic voice phenomena or EVP. This captures unexplained voices or sounds on recording devices. Paranormal investigators believe spirits or ghosts may use EVP to communicate with the living. These voices or sounds may be heard on recordings after they have been denoised and filtered with forensic tools, but not by the naked ear during the investigation. EVP has a controversial reputation in paranormal research, as some believe it is a reliable way to communicate with the other side. By contrast, others argue that the voices and sounds captured on recordings could be easily explained by natural causes or human error in a psychological phenomenon called auditory pareidolia, where the listener amplifies the significance of the sound. Studies have been completed to ascertain the reliability of EVP, however, it has yet to be possible to replicate the findings in a controlled environment. Despite the controversy surrounding EVP, it remains a popular technique among paranormal investigators and enthusiasts. However, it's essential to approach this technique with caution and an open mind. The true nature of the voices and sounds captured on recordings need to be verified, but this process can be subjective and open to interpretation. What do you think? Are poltergeists real? Are they an effect of psychokinesis? Or are they just hoaxes and misinterpretations? Are we sensing something beyond our sensory capabilities? Let us know what you think. Well, I'm creeped right out now. If the spirit moves you to discover the strange and obscure, don't forget to watch other installments from SOS by subscribing and clicking that notification bell. See you soon.